over the last 10 years, I have tried over a hundred hacking tools and these are the best. So the goal of this video is to give you guys the best hacking tools that are out there and to save you some time and your sanity, especially if you're getting started with bug bounties to understand what are the best tools that I personally also use in my day-to-day -day bug bounty hunting. When I start to look at my targets, typically the first approach is to do an asset discovery. This is where you look for a large target and you start looking for different subdomains and assets that belong to that domain. In this case, you can use a lot of different tools, but one that stands out the most for me, Subfinder by Project Discovery. It is probably one of the better tools and easiest ones to use. And also it is super, super easy to configure that I've been one of my go-to for especially just grabbing a list of subdomains very, very quickly. The second runner up for this category, especially if you are looking for a tool that does more extensive research around subdomains and subdomain gathering is also a mass. I personally don't use a mass as much. That's because it is a lot slower, but it also gives you better data, I think. But when I'm doing extensive research on a particular target, a mass also seems to be one of the go-to. So the first go-to for this category is going to be Subfinder with the second runner up as a mass for the reasons that I've mentioned. The second bit of asset discovery that I kind of think goes hand in hand comes to Port scanning. For port scanning, I am very, very old school. I really like using Nmap. I do know that there are tools like MassScan and Nobu out there that are very, very fast and probably a lot faster than Nmap that have been recently developed. But honestly, I'm pretty old school. I enjoy using Nmap more than anything else, but also you don't have to do what I do. I personally just like the accuracy of Nmap and I just think that it's one of the better tools out there for port scanning. But the runner ups for this category of port scanning are obvious, as I mentioned, Nabu and mass scan again they are very 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 fast i personally rather just scan with nmap and get better accurate results and just i'm used to this format but again the runner-ups for this category would be nabu and mass scan the second phase of my approach to a large target is typically information gathering in this case you want to gather information and get an overview of what every target looks like that includes looking at what hosts are accessible using the dns record so if you have a subdomain is it accessible or is it not then is to see what are the titles, the response size, the response header, the response title, and all this information that could generate leads for me and give me a place to focus on when I'm doing a fresh new target. If you had watched my streams back in the day, you would know that I'm a huge fan of HTTP probe. Unfortunately, HTTP probe by Tom Nom Nom only gives you the alive host and does some sort of a port scan, but it doesn't give you the other information. So for that reason, this is going to be our runner up. And the first choice for this category is going to be HTTPX by Project Discovery again. And the reason why I like to use this tool is because I can grab all of the domains that I've gotten from my previous step, and just feed it into a single tool that's gonna gather all this different information for me and spit it out in a readable format that I can also grip through. So the winner for this category specifically is HTTPX, but there's also the question of what if we are not doing recon? What do we do for information gathering here? What would you look at? Honestly, this tool is going to work on large targets as well as narrow scopes. For example, your larger web applications on a single domain, which allows you to scrape historic data on a particular target and fits it to you. So this category is just mostly about looking at historic data. It is kind of information gathering. It shows you some endpoints that may have been available in the past. And I used to be a big fan of using tools like Wayback URL and Get All URL, both from Tom Nom Nom and CDL or Corbin. But recently I have seen a lot of work around this brand new tool called Waymore. I'm gonna link it down below as well. All these tools are gonna to be down there, but Waymore has been one of the better results. It's giving me faster results, better, more accurate results. And a couple of the CTFs that I've created, I had a better result with Wayback than I did with the other tool. So Wayback wins the category of using tools that gives you historic data, but the runner up for this section are both Wayback URL and Get All URL, amazing tools. But now I'm using way more instead of the other two. Now let's talk about fuzzing and exploitation. For exploitation, I personally don't use a lot of tools. There are some amazing resources that you can use that maybe we can talk about those in a separate video. Drop me a comment, let me know. But I think as far as fuzzing one of the best tools that you can use is a proxy tool and personally i use a lot of burp suite for this category but i've been eyeballing kaido a lot i'll link it also down below it is actually developed by a bunch of bug bounty hunters and ctf players and they are in a almost tied place with burp suite and honestly i'm considering dumping burp for kaido full time and using it but if you don't want to pay for any of these tools you also have your zap proxy i've never used it but that is also an option but for the proxy category we have both Kaido and Burb Suite in the tie section. 
I'm actually making the switch to Kaido soon. And maybe we can do a review of that later. Burp Suite itself comes with a lot of different plugins. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you want me to create a video on what plugins to use with Burp Suite. But I don't think Burp really needs an introduction. It is a paid tool. And I think it's very worth even downloading the community and free version of it. It allows you to proxy between your web browser and your computer and kind of see what traffic you're sending in and out when you make a specific request to a website. And then you can use it to fuzz and find URLs or feed it to different plugins. But now let's talk about fuzzing in the sense of of content discovery. We talked about asset discovery. We've talked about information gathering. We talked about fuzzing kind of with exploitation using Burp Suite or Kaido. But now let's talk about content discovery, which I personally love to use FFuff. I think it's been one of the go-tos for a couple of years. Unfortunately, it took me a while to switch from DIR search to go to FFuff because I'm such a loyal fan to that tool. I love that tool, DIR search a lot, but it took me a while to switch over. So unfortunately for this category, DIR search goes into the runner up and FFuff is going to be the winner for this category, not only because it is a fast and accurate tool, but it also allows you to do more than just discovering endpoints. Once you find an endpoint, you can actually fuss with parameters or you can actually fuss with extensions. And it's just a one-stop tool that you can do a lot of different fuzzing with when it comes down to content discovery and just automating that process so ffuff is the winner i know there are other tools like ffuff in the market drop me a comment let me know what is your favorite maybe i'll do a review and maybe next year's video that i remake for this content or this video content that i make will include it and we would maybe will change my mind to switch over last but not least we want to talk about efficiency what are these tools that you can use as a hacker to become efficient with your time make sure you're allocating your resources properly the first route that comes to mind is ANU. Again, no surprise to have Tom Nom Nom all over this video. ANU allows you to see the difference in results from a command line. Let's say you run SubFinder three days ago, you save the results into a file. Now you run it again three days later. You wanna see the results from today and three days ago. You can use a tool like ANU and see what is the difference between the two and what were the new assets in there. You can use that for a bunch of different things. Supplements are one of them, but it makes you efficient and it allows you to focus on what are the brand new assets or leads that you have generated that is actually an amazing tool i highly recommend using it but also there's two other tools that i use very regularly when it comes down to looking at javascript files the first one that i really recommend is js link finder i actually created my own js parser years and years ago i think it inspired js linker as well they have created it the reason why i recommend theirs versus mine is we don't maintain js parser anymore and js link finder is actually being maintained regularly so honestly the credit is due for them so they actually are my go-to tool now when it comes down to looking at javascript files so in short what this tool does is it looks at a JavaScript file that you provided and it extracts all the different API calls and different routes that are in that JavaScript file and makes a list of them that allows you to explore them and look for vulnerabilities within them. There is also another tool that you can use called Source Mapper. Source Mapper is a tool written in Go that gets a source map that is generated by a Webpack or something similar and it actually recreates a JavaScript file that belongs to it and spits out the original JavaScript file and it just makes it look a lot nicer to go through and a lot of times it is just ugly to look at many five JavaScript script files that they don't have the source for and when the source is available you can actually just download it feed it to this tool and look at the source tree based on the file paths in the source map you can use dev tools and burp extensions but honestly i like to automate some of this workflow and it is a part of my day-to-day -day hacking so i recommend using this tool and they are the third tool that i recommend in this suite of tools that i use on a very regular basis when it comes down to my bug hunting there you have it those are the best hacking tools that i found in the last 10 years but just using a ton of different tooling and if you are a new bug bounty hunter hopefully this gives you a good list of tools to start but just remember it's not the tools that make you a good hacker it also comes down to you learning how these tools work and just using them in your advantage to become more efficient and just save time and resources all right that's it do me a favor if you haven't already hit that like button become a homie and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to go further, we have opened up memberships for this channel. I think it's only $5 and everything that we create and make from this subscriptions go directly to maintaining this channel. So if you want to also subscribe in that way, we'd love to have you on board. Otherwise, that's it. Thank you so much. I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.